Okay, we're going to finish this up. Um, I don't know what happened, but I videotaped the last part, and the last part just disappeared on my computer, the file and everything. It'll turn up eventually. So we only had two verses left, and let's get to them. 1 Peter 3.16. We're going to start on verse 15, and we're going to read to 18. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear, having a good conscience that whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. All right. right now we see right here your conscience can be good. In verse uh, 16. Having a good conscience, good being right with the Lord and strong, that whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversations in Christ. Okay. Your conscience is going to upset people. And you're going to shame people when you stand for truth. Um, best example, if you used to be an alcoholic, you get saved, and now when people are like, hey, why don't you come to the bar with us? Why don't you come to the dance club with us? Let's go drinking. And you tell them, hey, I'm born again. Um, good conversations uh, in Christ. I'm born again, and I gave that up for Jesus Christ because it's a sin. And I won't do that stuff anymore. I won't drink anymore. I won't go to those places anymore. And you're going to shame them. And oftentimes, if you notice here, it says, as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. Oh, come on, you used to do it. You're going to get reactions from people, like, from your lost life. And even in, when you're saved and you come across somebody and you say, I won't do that because it's a sin, or I do this because it's right with the Lord, especially professing Christians, and you're going to get people upset. And... I have no doubt that they have shame in their heart because they, they do it and, and this person won't and it kind of shames them and hopefully it gets their conscience to think about it and, get, and then their conscience will convict them that hey maybe I shouldn't do this. Um, it also says good conversation, talking about Jesus Christ is going to shame people uh, when you let them know that they're sinners on their way to hell. So here we see conscience can be good. Being right with the Lord and strong. And I put it here that, so here we see that your conscience can shame evildoers. Why do you think many people will evil, with evil consciences will attack you? Um, what are you, a goody little two-shoes? You think you're holier than me? You think you're better than me? Well, if you're lost, yes. You need to get saved. still a sinner though, um, but I'm just saying, my, my sins are washed away by the blood of Christ. Now we're going to go to 1 Peter 3.21, the last time it's mentioned. 1 Peter 3.21, same spot, we're going to start at 18, and we're going to read through. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. But which also he went out, I'm sorry, I guess I'm over. By which also he went and preached unto the Spirit in prison, which sometime were disobedience, when once the long suffering of God waited in the day of Noah. Now if you go with the Spirit of prison, I believe this is Jesus Christ going down and, uh, to the Abraham's bosom. While the ark was prepared, wherein few, that is, eight souls were saved by water, 
The like figure whereunto even baptism doth also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. So we got conscience here that says answer of a good conscience towards God. Once again, having your heart right with the Lord. Through Jesus, uh, baptism of the Holy Ghost, uh, Matthew 3.11, I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Holy Ghost, heaven, fire, hell. Take, it's talking about Jesus going down to Abraham's bosom. But if you remember, your conscience is will bear witness to the laws that are written on your heart. Your, and the laws that are written on your heart are a schoolmaster to bring you to Christ. So if you have a good conscience, like it's talking about, towards God, your heart is or your conscience is right with the Lord, is because you're saved. Okay? You listen to your conscience. You're no good. You're on your way to hell and you deserve to go to hell. So conscience here is good. Uh, being right with the Lord and having strength to stand for the Lord, to stand for what is right. So over this whole study, I'm hoping you got the gist of it. I know I might have not been as clear in some areas, and I'm still getting the hang of this and focusing on talking and not worrying about the camera. But remember the 13 things we came through here. Your conscience can be convict you. Your conscience can convict you and only you. It can't convict somebody else. It can shame somebody else. It can witness to somebody else that what they're doing is wrong. But their own conscience has to convict them. Your conscience can offend God and man. Okay? You can offend God with your conscience. When you say, I don't think that's wrong, and you fall into temptation, and you fall into sin, you can offend God. When you stand out there saying, I'm a Christian, yet you're in the bars drinking, you're offending God by telling people you're a Christian when you're not. Um, a lot of false Christians out there, a lot of, I believe, saved sinners, Christians, um, we'll get to that point about seer, your conscience can be seared, where there's certain things you do and you just won't repent for it. Number three, your conscience can bear witness. We just talked about it. My conscience can bear witness when I'm lost to the laws written on my heart and when I'm saved through, uh, my conscience can bear witness in the Holy Spirit when it comes to my life as a Christian. The written word of God, okay? I'm supposed to be doing this. Study show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not shame, rightly divided the word of truth. Do not conform to the world. Um, don't be a friend of the world. Abstain from all appearance of evil. You know, stay in the Word, stay in prayer, give God glory for everything, give God thanks in all things. Um, your conscience is going to bear witness when you start to fail to do these things. Your conscience um, will bear witness in the Holy Spirit saying, hey, you're not supposed to do that. Your conscience will hit you first, then the Holy Spirit's going to hit you. Four, your conscience can be good, your conscience can be right with the Lord, and it can be strong. In other words, you hear it and be like, you're starting to do, go to do this and you hear it and it's strong and you're like, uh, I probably shouldn't do that. I, I, I really don't want to do that. It's so late. But then your conscience gets you and go, you know, you, you haven't read the Bible all day and you're about to go to bed. <laughs> Grab the Bible and read a chapter. It's not going to kill you to stay up an extra 20 minutes. Number five, your conscience can become weak. It can get to the point where you can barely hear it. Uh, it can get to the point where, uh, and we'll get to the next part where it can be, become defiled. But your conscience can become weak. And when the temptations come in, whether it's a brother in Christ, a friend from your lost life, that temptation can come in and it can make you very weak. Your conscience weak, where it won't speak as often, or it won't give you that strong. You might feel something, but it won't give you that strong. Hey, you're not supposed to do that. Uh, you're supposed to do this. It goes more like a whisper. Maybe you should.
shouldn't do that. Or, I don't know, maybe you should. And it gets to a whisper. And then after that, when we get to it, it can become defiled. Number six, your conscience can be pure. Okay? When you get saved, your conscience can be pure. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit in you. And your conscience can become weak, I believe, as a Christian. I understand that you can give in to temptation and sin. But your conscience, you stay in the Word, you study the Word, your conscience is going to know. And when you don't know something, God through the Holy Spirit is going to show you. Uh, one of the biggest things is like the Trinity, using the terms of the Trinity. I used to do that. And when God showed me, I had a pure conscience doing that because I didn't look into it. it was, I didn't know about it. And then when it, the truth was shown to me that, hey, you need to stay away from the Trinity terms and you need to stay away from all that stuff, uh, false terms, uh, adding to the scriptures that it's a false God, I repented because my conscience was pure and I went to the Godhead. Number seven, because it's weak, your conscience can become defiled. Okay, It gets to the point where it's corrupt and it'll just say, you know what? I think that's okay. I think that's okay. I have no problem with that. Um, you know what? You should do that. And the Bible says you you're not supposed to. Number eight, your conscience can have a testimony. Okay? You can testify at times when your conscience says you weren't supposed to do this and you fell into temptation, you did it, and this is what happened. And that you're not supposed to do it. You grab from the Word of God and say, this is why you're not supposed to do it. Um, you can have a testimony that my conscience just gave me a weird feeling. Um, you know, that ashtray I had, I thought it was just a plate, but every time I went by, it just gave me this weird feeling, and you testify to it. I finally picked it up, looked at it, realized it was an ashtray, realized it had false gods on it, it was from Thailand, and it was a souvenir, and I got rid of it. And I testified to it, saying, my conscience convicted me. So your conscience can have a testimony. Your conscience can be seared, damaged, and scarred. Okay? To the point that there's certain sins that you'll try to hold on to. And then there's times where you'll let go of that sin, but that scar will be with you. There's some sins that will stay with you as far as the, the consequences. The Bible says, if you live after the flesh, you shall die. Um, there's certain sins that are going to stick with you in the sense that people are going to say you used to do it. Uh, your body, like if you smoke all most of your life, you get saved, you quit, you can still get lung cancer, uh, liver cancer. Um, if you, just all kinds of things where your conscience is going to have a scar on it and you're always going to be like, I wish I never did that. So your conscience can be seared, damaged, scarred. Ten, your conscience cannot be perfect. And this has to do with the Old Testament. Law of sin and death. Old Testament hell or, and Abraham's bosom. Okay, Their conscience, they could not be perfect. We learned that the blood could make their conscience clean. That they used to cover the sins, the sacrifices. So, your conscience cannot be perfect. But when you get saved, your conscience can be pure. You got the blood of Jesus Christ washing your sins away. I can go, I can sometimes, and I try not to too much, sometimes you can think back to the sins you committed in the past and it can start getting you down. But most of the time you're like, thank you Lord for forgiveness. Thank you for washing my sins away. You can have a pure conscience. Eleven, uh, your conscience can be purged. And that kind of, the purge part is kind of what I screwed it up with. The pure is your save, but the purge happens when you go from lost, being lost, to being saved. Your conscience can be purged. The blood of Jesus Christ washes your sins away, and your conscience is no longer reminded, you did that, you did that, you're dirty, you're filthy. Uh, I still believe I'm a, I'm a sinner, and uh, I deserve to go to hell, but you don't dwell on those sins anymore. They don't affect you like they did when you were lost before you got saved. Your conscience was bearing witness to the laws written on your heart. Now, conscience, your conscience bears witness in the Holy Ghost. We have a Bible, perfect written word of God, in which to live by. 
uh, 12, your conscience can be evil. You cannot kill your conscience, but what can happen is your conscience can become defiled and your conscience can become evil to where it tells you, hey, go fornicate. There's nothing wrong with it. Go fornicate. Oh, there's nothing wrong. You can use whatever Bible version you want. You can drink yourself to death, smoke yourself to death. You can Anything the Bible says is a sin, do it, man. Do it, do it, do it. Your conscience can come evil and start telling you to do things, making you think it's okay. It's no big deal. Another thing I didn't mention in any of the words when we went through it, when it comes to your conscience can be evil, could that be related to your heart being hardened? Maybe. Thirteen, your conscience can shame the evildoers. Okay. You can put them to shame and they will get mad at you, or their conscience will convict their heart. Okay. So that's the study. I hope you guys enjoyed it and followed me along. And if I didn't get my point across, by, feel free to talk about these verses in the comment section. And if I made a mistake somewhere, um, let me know. I'm open to correction. But I love word studies and the conscience here. The biggest thing I learned is you can't kill your conscience. And it was nice to know that your conscience cannot be perfect when you're lost but your conscience can be purged when you're saved, when you get saved. And then now that you're saved, you can have a pure conscience. It's no longer the opposite of defiled. That's why I kept saying, I don't know if defiled, people who conscience get defiled, could that mean that their heart gets hardened? They don't want to hear truth. They're going to live however they want to. They want nothing to do with the real Jesus Christ of Scripture. So, if you've kept up with me this far, thank you for watching. And I'll see you in the next video.